Nice. Hello guys, it's Gameplays. I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel for a new video. Well, apart from my fabulous hair, not. Uh, <laughs> apart from that, of course, um, let's do a game. Imagine a really, really hot place. My room is hot. I can guarantee you that right now it is at least 27 degrees in this room. So yeah, it's damn hot. But well, back to the testing. Today's video is about PCI Express 1 versus PCI Express 2 versus 3 versus 4. Before the testing, which will be done at 1080p, 1440p and 4K using a Ryzen 5 3600 and the RX 5700 XT, we're gonna have a brief introduction of how PCI Express works, what it is and where, when, in this case, when the, the several versions were announced. Next video is almost likely be um, a reviewing, unboxing and reviewing because I already recorded the unboxing. An unboxing and reviewing of the Deep Cool Fryzen cooler. And after that we'll have several tests on the AMD Ryzen 3 3100, including an overclocking tutorial of course. So yeah, next videos will also be pretty cool. And well guys, there's not much more to say, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video and let's go to the part you really want to see, the testing. See you in the conclusion. PCI Express means Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. It is a high serial computer expansion bus standard that came to replace the older PCI, PCI-X and AGP bus standards. If you're older than 25 and you are into PCs since a child or a teenager, you must remember the time where GPUs were running into AGP slots instead of the PCI Express slots. Good times. <laughs> Nowadays, we have loads of things using PCI Express, like graphics cards, sound cards, wireless and Ethernet cards, and even hard drives. PCI Express devices communicate via a logical connection called an interconnect or link, which is a point-to-point -point communication channel between two PCI Express ports, allowing both to receive ordinary PCI requests or interrupts. Physically, they always use one or more lanes depending on the needs. Nowadays, motherboards and CPUs use mostly 16 lanes, apart from APUs like for example the Ryzen 5 3400G that uses 8 lanes to the integrated graphics. So you'll actually only have 8 more lanes if you use a discrete GPU, in case you want to add one for example. The first version of PCI Express was released back in 2003, the second one in 2007, the third one in 2010 and the fourth one in 2017, starting to be efficiently used in the mainstream market after 2019. And there were also some in-between revisions that were made usually for more efficiency of the tech used back then. One of the most important thing that forces PCI Express technology to advance is bandwidth needs. As seen in this table presented in Wikipedia, you have all versions of PCI Express and their respective transfer rates. Depending on the amount of lanes in the specific generation, the amount of data will also vary. For example, PCI Express 4 with 8 lanes will have as much bandwidth as PCI Express 3 with 16 lanes, meaning that you can use those remaining lanes for for example hard drives or any other PCI cards you have, which is nice. And well, now that you know the basics, let's move to the benchmarks. Today's opening game is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In this game we can see that the difference between all PCI Express generations is almost null at 1080p and even the PCI Express 1 can deliver good results. Once we go up to 1440p we start seeing some differences. Only PCI Express 1 
is delivering considerably lower results, and anything over PCI Express 2 will be fine. Overall in this game the difference is small, and only PCI Express 1 will lag behind, which is pretty comprehensible since the technology was introduced back in 2003. Crazy, huh? As soon as you left, the whole horde of mutants decided to crash my party. Yeah, these parts are dangerous. <laughs> That's right. Here's your suit, Ed. Thanks. The second game is Metro Exodus playing the Sam Story DLC using the X12 and Ultra settings. This game brought us some really interesting results since at 1080p and 1440p, PCI Express 1 was the only that really lagged behind and while PCI Express 2 was also a bit slower, the difference was minimal. But then we go into 4K testing and as you can see the difference is massive. At 4K using PCI Express 1 gives us an unbearable experience of 19.9 .9 average FPS and 8.81% lows. Going to PCI Express 2 boosts the performance massively to nearly double the average FPS and triple the 1% lows. The performance still goes up going to PCI Express 3, which gives us the same results as PCI Express 4. Overall, Anything over PCI Express 2 will be fine. Now it's Strange Brigade using Max settings and Vulkan API. As opposed to previous tests, we can see that this game doesn't care much about bandwidth, and that is presented in the results. Even using PCI Express 1 won't make us have way less performance, instead we just have a mild variation at all resolutions. In fact, there is not much more to see here. Moving on. Well, Rainbow Six Siege presents the same case scenario of Strange Brigade. Here we can see almost no performance difference, even going pr from PCI Express 1 2003 to PCI Express 4 2019. Even at 1080p, the difference from PCI 1 to 4 is around 8 FPS on average and 6 FPS in the 1% loads. Which is a little deception. But well, it is what it is. Let's see what the next game brings us. Now with the Division 2 using Ultra settings and the X12. In this game we can see that the normal pattern presented in some previous games, which is anything over PCI Express 1 is fine, is still here. Still, PCI Express 3 brings us some performance increase over PCI Express 2, while the PCI Express 4 gives us virtually the same results as PCI Express 3. Even with a GPU as strong as the RX 5700 XT, it seems that if you have 16 lanes, you'll be fine in most cases, even with PCI Express 1 from 2003. Fascinating.
Reaching the final line, we have World War Z, using max settings and Vulkan API. Once again, the same pattern applies. Basically, only around 6 to 8 FPS in average and 1% lows, going from PCI Express 1 to PCI Express 4. Basically, even using the same PCI Express 1 from 2003 once again, will deliver a smooth experience with a card as recent as the 5700 XT. Let's move on. The last game tested today is Control, and finally we see some interesting results. As can be seen at 1440p and 4K, the difference is mild, as in the previous games, but the real difference is in the 1080p tests. Finally, we can see PCI Express 1 having considerably lower performance at lower than 4K resolutions, and at 1080p we have a difference of around 6 average FPS, but most importantly, 10 FPS in the 1% lows comparing to PCI Express 2. And going from PCI Express 2 to 3 gives us once again more 1% lows, which is also nice. Apart from being small, this game is the only one tested where we could see a difference going from PCI Express 3 to PCI Express 4, which is also great to see. With all this said, let's go to the conclusion. Oh, it's conclusion time already. I was just having some really cold water because it's damn cold, damn cold, damn hot. So I'm having old cold. <laughs> so I'm having cold water in my medieval, medieval thing that I don't know the name in English. <laughs> well, it was pretty interesting doing this test for me, and this idea came from a recent channel member, so thanks a lot, because it was a pretty damn good idea, that's why I'm making the video, thanks a lot, uh, and hope you really like to see the results. Now, going back to the results, once again, it seems in fact that uh, anything over PCI Express 1 in most in most of the games we tested, anything over PCI Express 1, 16 lanes, will be fine. Usually every single motherboard has 16 PCI Express lanes in the first lane. So in the first PCI Express connector you have on your motherboard, it will be 16 times. But there is a, a special case where, where some APUs, in this case for example the Ryzen 5 2400G, has only 8 PCI lanes. Okay, because it has an APU, the other 8 PCI lanes will be to the APU, so even if you disable an APU's integrated graphics, the CPU only part will have only 8 lanes, so that may change a bit the results and maybe only PCI Express 3 or PCI Express 4 may have the full performance in every single case, okay? There are also some cases, for example, on the RX 5500 XT cards, they only have 8 lanes, 8 PCI lanes, I don't really know why, that is a stupid action from AMD, I have to call them out because it is stupid, they cut the, the 8 lanes because ok, we have PCI Express 4 so we don't need uh, 16 lanes anymore, we can have 8 lanes ok, but once we go to PCI Express 3 8 lanes the performance gets decreased a bit, so that may also change the um, the scenario, but in almost every single computer and almost every single part that is available right now, well, the results will be like this. So, anything over PCI Express 1 will be fine. Going from PCI Express 2 to 3, which is available from like 2011 till now, so almost any, almost anyone using a PC right now will have at least PCI Express 3, so this is just in the name of science mostly, so anything over PCI Express 3 will be fine unless you have these specific scenarios, okay, that I've talked before. PCI Express 4 is still not needed, at least for gaming, even using a high-end card, high, mid, yes, high-end card, we can call it high-end, not enthusiastic, but high-end card like the 5700 XT. So yeah, PCI Express 4 not needed in 2020. Well guys, hope you really enjoyed this in the name of science video. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks a lot one more time from the suggestion 
from our channel member and well see you in the next video guys which will be also pretty damn great adeus